Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be showing you the techniques and tips to draw this macaw eye and the wrinkly skin and the little feather effects around here as well. Now you may recognise this guy because if you watched one of my previous tutorials which covered doing the macaw's beak then this is from the same thing, this is what I did before the beak but I thought that I would bring you the wrinkly eye skin and the actual eye as well because some of you may be interested in creating that texture. So let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I like to do is go into the eye because for me when I'm drawing something that doesn't have an eye or anything it kind of makes me feel a little bit odd so I always start with the eye so we can have a little bit of personality. So the first thing I'm doing is just adding in a very faint line of dark sepia to get the outer edge and the outline of the pupil incorrectly and then I'm just filling them in a little bit more with a little bit of hard pressure on that dark sepia pencil adding in a little walnut brown or a van dyke brown in this case there's also some dark indigo so once that's in I'm just going to add in a few little highlighted areas within the actual iris of the macaw with some white for this I'm using the Holbein soft white pencil I like this one because it's really nice and opaque and actually when you lay this down as a very first layer your um, other colours tend to negate these spaces kind of like using a negative space method or using like a wax resist method so that's really handy when using this pencil then I'm just going in with my lightest colours and then working my way up into to the darker colours. So this particular macaw eye was quite like a pale green, pale yellow colour. So I've just put down a base of warm grey one, gone in with some yellow. So I've just sort of laid down some dark cadmium yellows and also some earth green are the primary colours that I used for this. And every now and then I'm just going in and blending with the white pencil to kind of tone everything down and help everything look really nice and smooth using a white pencil to blend like this just to help you get that really glassy smooth look like you would expect to see of an eye. I'm just going in with some earth green and adding in some darker areas and for this as I'm explaining here I'm kind of using like a zigzag like starburst kind of motion with the pencil just making some very small lines just to add in some details and everything in there and for laying down the actual colour within the iris I'm actually using a bit of a circular motion just going round and round in small circles and kind of building them together to get that really nice smooth surface rather than going in with a back and forth kind of shading. So as I said I tend to work from lightest to darkest colours so I've put down those lighter layers and then finally going in with some darker oranges and darker yellows and going in with some browns and adding in a little bit of shadow around the eye in places. Also adding in a little bit of blue to really accentuate some of those greens right around the pupil there. And that's pretty much it for the actual eye itself. It doesn't actually take too many colours or too many layers because this particular iris was quite pale, didn't have any really strong striking colours. If you want to check out the reference, I'm going to leave a link in the description below in case you want to follow along and try this guy yourself. Um, yeah, so the eye for this was actually really, really straightforward. Simple techniques of just using circular motions to create this smooth texture of the eye and blending with the white pencil and just building in a few little zigzag sort of stuff starburst motions to add in a little bit of detail. So for the skin around the outside it's actually pretty light like you would look at it and think that it was like white like light grey kind of skin and that's what we go in to begin with with a layer of warm grey one so our lightest colour so we're working from light to dark again here. And then I'm going in with another little layer just to define some of the very darkest areas and wrinkles directly around the outside of that eye that we've just coloured. And before we going in and doing any more of the skin, just adding in some of those small details, this particular eye has like these little kind of like bobbles around the outside of the eye kind of it's kind of like the cornice I always call it that the is holding the eye in and I'm just adding in the texture for those just making some really small tiny tiny circles uh, kind of attached and some not attached to the outside of the iris bit of the eye there just gives it a little bit of texture and makes it look as if the eye is actually being held in kind of think like how you would see a jewelry setting that's a kind of best explanation I can give for this particular texture. And before we go in and add any more of the skin I'm just going in and adding a little bit of shading with the Van Dyke Brown, also a little bit of 
uh, dark indigo around the outer edge of the eye as well just to help it look as if it's a little bit sunken in give it a little bit of shadow and then as I said I'm going in with a second layer of the warm grey one into the wrinkles and defining all of the darker areas so I'm really looking at the reference photo and I'm seeing where we have some darker set wrinkles and I'm going in with a second layer and a harder pressure on my warm grey one pencil and adding all of those in. I'm just working in a small section to begin with at the moment and just concentrating in a small area around the eye. And with these darker areas, I'm using a little bit of a shading method, so going back and forth, but I'm also making a little bit of like a wavy line, because if you look at the texture of wrinkles on this particular kind of texture, they're not completely straight or completely curved. They have a little bit of like a wiggle to them, so I'm kind of exaggerating the wiggles and kind of moving my pencil, kind of like you would make an S shape and continuing it along, and making that kind of motion with the pencil when I'm adding in these darker grooves. And then once we've done with the warm grey one, then I'm just going in with a darker pencil, this time a warm grey three, and going into those wrinkles once again, and just kind of consolidating the kind of dark kind of nature of them. Once that layers down, then I'm going in with a brown pencil, doing exactly the same thing. I'm going over the top of those darker set wrinkles, all of those shadows and everything, with the brown pencil. And this time, instead of just going into the wrinkles and making that kind of wiggly S motion, I'm also going and shading right on the side with the pencil and just adding in a little bit of shading around it. So it kind of blends them in a little bit more so they're not like completely just white or lighter skin and then darker skin. So adding in a little bit of a glaze of a pencil like this brown using the side of it just coming over those wrinkly areas just helps to kind of blend them in a little bit more and it just makes them look a little bit more natural on top of the skin instead of just leaving it just greys i'm also adding in some red and some orange and some other colors that i can see reflected on there which is mainly the color of the feathers that are surrounding the bird so this particular bird has some blue, green, orange and red feathers and some yellow as well so I'm kind of adding all of those colours into the skin because as white skin kind of reflects all this kind of colour those are the colours that I can see in there. So that's pretty much all it takes for the wrinkles you're just kind of putting down a base layer and then you're going in with a harder pressure and defining some of those darker areas then going in to those darker areas with a secondary dark layer, so using a darker grey, or perhaps your wrinkles are brown, so you'd go in with a slightly darker brown. And then just going in with some more darker colours, in my, my case a brown, but in your case it could be a different colour, and then you're just kind of going back into the little wrinkly areas and shading some of that very dark colour very, very lightly over the top to just help blend them in. You can see as I'm doing this again here, just using that warm grey one pencil to go in and darken up some of those deeper set wrinkles and just adding in some of that texture using that kind of wiggly line method so remember you don't want to keep really straight lines or put really nicely curved lines you want to give them a little bit of wiggle you want to give them a little bit of structure and give them like a little bit of a more of a jagged edge rather than just being nice and smooth for the little feather details that you can see that I've already done around the eye there, for those, all I've done is taken my darkest pencil, which for me was a dark sepia, and I have just used that, made sure it's got a really nice sharp point, and then I've just looked at the direction that those little feathers are coming out of the skin. They're mainly coming out from like around the wrinkly areas, pointed the pencil down, and then kind of made like a fur motion, so as I'm going along the length of that particular feather just kind of lifting my pencil off the paper as it comes towards the end so you get a nice tapered line and I'm making sure that I'm adding these in slightly different directions and angles so it looks a lot more natural that way it kind of looks like the feathers are a lot more sparse and they're not like all kind of going in the same direction that kind of looks a little bit contrived so you want to just make sure that you keep them going very slight at different angles to one another just makes it look a lot more natural as you can see and where you have that stark contrast of the lighter skin and that darker area it really makes you it, the feathers look as if they're really poking out so you want to make sure that you use the darkest possible colour that you can when you're adding in feathers like this so you get that nice stark contrast so it looks like they're popping out. So as you can see on the skin here I've just kind of used some warm grey 3 to add in some wiggly lines. I'm also using some reds as I explained and some oranges through the skin just kind of reflecting some of those feather colours. 
on the lower half here I do have some slightly more kind of exaggerated wiggly lines kind of want to imagine this like the roots of a plant all kind of intertwined and everything that's a good way to describe it actually and just kind of making the wrinkles and everything kind of look like branches off a tree or roots to a tree or something like that just kind of branching them off one another and then just continuing to darken those ones that really need that kind of darker more accented area and just making sure you're using some of those darker colors to blend over the top so that they blend into the skin as well and if you do have some really light areas then you can go in with a white pencil and just kind of blend down and help to really lighten those light areas up and then you kind of get that nice contrast between the light and the dark areas so that's pretty much it for the wrinkly skin and as you can see i'm just kind of adding in some of those feathers over the top and you can really see that it is really effective with the way that you have that stark dark color of those feathers and then the lighter skin and I think this is a really simple technique it is one that does take a little bit of practice to get right so just make sure you practice doing some like wiggly s shapes and a bit more of like a jagged kind of harsh kind of line and try not to keep them so smooth and going in one direction all the time just make sure that you kind of have some coming off at um, different angles and all stuff like that and then it'll just help it look a lot more natural and the wrinkles will sit a lot better on the particular texture that you are drawing but I hope that you found this particular tutorial helpful if you want to draw along with the whole thing and follow this in real time for a little bit more in-depth instruction then make sure you head on over to my patreon page or to my website where you can find this tutorial it's actually a live draw along session so there's a whole hour and a bit live draw along session where you can follow along with this in real time and get some good instruction a little bit more in depth and all of that so make sure you check out the links in the description um, for those if you fancy that but anyway i will see you in the next one thank you so much for watching bye